Everything you are about to see is real. All events take place over the course of a weekend. The psychics and the investigators have no prior knowledge of the case. At their request, the family's names have been changed. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I get scared to let the kids be out alone. No, I believe there is something out there. I don't know why it is that they're coming. Definitely something's going on here. This is something big. I felt something, and I wasn't dreaming when it happened. Every day when I wake up, I look under the bed. I feel a lot of death. What is that, TJ? The monster. <gasps> this is a visitation, and it's not from family. I feel like I'm always being watched. I'm just not sure by whom. We want answers once and for all. It's a lot of screaming and crying and calling for mommy. 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 <gasps> Set on fire. The children are being swept away. <sighs> this is unbearable. Oh, God. I've pretty much tried to shield my children from anything that is going on. I just wish that they would go away. Each week, the Preternatural Research Society, a seasoned team of renowned psychics and historical researchers, has an urgent mission. Over the course of a three-day investigation, they must scientifically uncover paranormal threats, remove unwanted spirits, and return a home to its rightful owners. With increasing paranormal activity in their home, John and Wendy Reynolds fear for their children, who have begun to experience activity themselves. They call in PRS to help. Daryl Mitson, PRS team leader and occult specialist. Jane Doherty, world-renowned medium, recognized as one of America's top 25 psychics. Susan P.A., psychic healer and energy work specialist with a degree in clinical psychology. Kiki Mandalosis, psychic intuitive with an expertise in spiritual cleansing. Friday evening, the team arrives at the Reynolds house for the weekend. Hi, I'm Wendy. Wendy, nice to meet you. Uh, it's always interesting when you have kids trying to figure out the story and, and what they're saying and what's going on. And you are... TJ. And my name is... Kiki. Yes, Kiki. Just driving up to the house, the energy felt dense. How are you? <laughs> Good. 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 What is my name? I don't know. Susan. <laughs> I began to feel that there was some sort of an energy that was moving from the back of the house to the front. Hey, Daryl. John, John. How are you? Nice Hi, I'm Wendy. Hi, Hi I'm Wendy. Jane. And I just think the house is sort of misplaced. It's just. It, it just doesn't feel right to me. Thank you, all of you, for giving up your weekend and coming out to try and assist us. Over the years, PRS has helped hundreds of families who've experienced ghosts in their homes. So how are things going to uh, progress this weekend? We have equipment. We have psychics. We're just going to let them see if they find anything, pick up anything. It's going to be fun because we don't know what will happen until it does. Wendy and John have been experiencing paranormal disturbances for years. They are now desperate for help because their children have begun experiencing ghost activity as well. I would say the ultimate goal for this weekend is to get rid of all of the presence of ghosts in this house. Now that the psychics are here, I hope that they give us some answers. Hopefully maybe they can uh, communicate with them and get them out of here. Family was very interesting because there's a lot of energy in their eyes. As part of their process of gathering first impressions, the team must determine if the family has innate psychic abilities and can see ghosts. They're big eyes. They're all intense eyes. We're dealing with a family that we're kind of thinking has ability. So now the question is, well, is the house haunted? Here you go, Amy. My niece, Amy, is pretty much a non-believer. She has slept at my house several times and has never had anything happen to her. I think that my aunt is letting her fears get the best of her and not thinking logically. I really don't think that there's anything here. We moved in the house almost eight and a half years ago. 
and our first impressions were it would make a nice home to start a family. It was gorgeous outside with all the foliage, the woods. I just feel as though there's a lot of things that have gone on in those woods. I think if it could speak to us, it would be crying out. Wendy's first ghost experience occurred three years ago. Since then, she's had three sightings a week. The first experience was waking up, feeling like someone was bending over me, holding me down. Do you, all of you bring different things to the table? Do you all sense things differently? Each member of the PRS team has their own talents. Jane is a published author with over 25 years experience as a professional psychic. Among her many unique talents is the ability to use her body as a psychic instrument. As the psychics continue to learn more about the family over dinner, PRS researchers Kenny Rajinsky and Emily Snyder are busy gathering historical information about the property and the surrounding area. Back at the house, Daryl speaks privately with Wendy and John to ensure that the psychics are not influenced, this information isn't shared. Does everyone in the house believe that the house is haunted? Yeah, I've experienced a couple things myself that I can't explain, where I was awoken by the feeling of something grabbing me and holding me down by my um, calves. I was kicking very hard, and I physically felt a lot of pain in my foot. And the next day, I had a bruise, probably about the size of a half dollar. So I know you said you wake up at night and you see people. Shortly after going to sleep, I will be woken up by something, feeling that something's staring at me. As soon as I open my eyes, I see the person usually standing at the side of my bed looking at me. I basically tell them to go away, leave us alone. To better understand the children's terrifying new experiences, Kiki has been chosen to work with TJ and Amanda because of her psychic talents and more importantly for her unique ability to connect with children. Sometimes I'm afraid of the dark. You are? I am afraid of the dark. Sometimes. I'm not. You're I'm not? Afraid. Yeah. Oh, I'm Mom afraid and Dad and Amanda, no, they're not they're afraid not. of the dark, but I am. One time I saw Do something I, I at my here. door. It was like curled up in a ball. And it was like in a black suit. Mm -hmm. And I said, come in. It came in, but you know what? The door didn't even open. I didn't watch it come in. I closed my eyes. And then it came at the corner of my bed. It was like hiding down. Mm -hmm. Then it stood up. And then it didn't look like a, little, a round black ball anymore? Oh. Nope. What did it look like when it stood up? Can you draw that picture? Its arms were like wide out and the head was up. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get to see the face. I didn't see anything. No body, just blackness. It like came up and I like felt like some, like it dropped something on my legs, like bam. TJ's experience is eerily similar to his father's. I felt something holding me down and I physically felt a lot of pain in my foot. What is that, TJ? The monster. While TJ describes the menacing figure which has been terrorizing him, team leader Daryl sends Susan, a psychic with 20 years experience, to the boy's bedroom to search for answers. My legs want to collapse out from under me, which tells me that there's something going on in this area of his room. I would venture to say that this may be an entrance way of some sort, and this feels like it could be connected to an entity. This is a visitation, and it's not from family. This is a tall man who was a carrier of heavy loads. It is now well past the children's bedtime. Come on, let's go to bed. Once long ago, there was a tiny girl no bigger than your thumb. Come on, big guy. Want to sleep with the lights on? I know. With the children tucked into bed, PRS attempts to identify the dark spirit which disrupts TJ's sleep. A ghost that both Wendy and John have also seen. 
While Jane and Kiki search for more clues about the identity of the spirit inside the house, Susan senses something on the property and goes out into the night to investigate. What she finds is completely unexpected. This isn't the same person, someone else. I can't get a fix on what this is, but this is group. I feel there are more than one soul here that's stuck. Susan has discovered not a single ghost, but the presence of multiple spirits. It's an accident. It's an accident. Something accidental happened. With the investigation underway, PRS believes that seven-year-old TJ and his parents, Wendy and John, have encountered a menacing entity within the house. While the children sleep, Susan senses the presence of multiple spirits and picks up a traumatic past event. Something accidental happened. There's absolutely a sense of just wanting to lay down and die. As Susan is overwhelmed by the spirits in the yard, the rest of the team is also picking up multiple presences in the house. There are a lot of ghosts here, many more than I thought. I'm feeling tragedy. There are a lot of ghosts here. With still no answers to help solve the mystery of the spirits which fill the house and roam the land, the question is, what cataclysmic event could have occurred to create this much activity? In an effort to solve this growing mystery, Susan attempts to capture electronic voice phenomena, the voices of the dead, which lie beyond the range of human hearing, but can be captured on audio tape. It is her hope that these EVPs will offer insight into the tragic deaths that she sensed earlier. Is there someone in the room with me right now? Using a consumer digital recorder, Susan asks a series of questions in hopes of capturing the sounds of spirits responding. This recording was made at three in the morning with only Susan and the cameraman in the room. The bone chilling EVP you are about to hear has been neither altered nor enhanced. Is there someone in the room with me right now? The spirit's ferocious attempt at communication only deepens the growing mystery. Before conducting these tests, Susan performed a thorough check of her recorder and concluded it was in perfect working order. By ruling out the possibility of any technical glitches, there can be only one explanation for these sounds, ghosts. Shocked by the intensity of the EVP, Susan calls in Jane and non-believer Amy to listen. Do you live here? How old are you? Angry. It's trying to, and it coincides with what I was feeling as though there is uh, trapped spirits. It almost feels like a wagon train of souls, you know, walking through. The EVP suggests the presence of multiple spirits. Could the victims of some past catastrophe be trying to communicate with the living? As it got more energy to manifest, it was getting louder and louder. And it was like you, you were getting the emotion off of it. It was just almost frightening. And you could just feel the pain almost. And it gave me chills. I guess that I'm starting to think that uh, there might be something here. Having completed the EVP test, Jane now goes downstairs and conducts a walkthrough of the basement. Very drawn to this room. In fact, as I just enter it, my stomach expands, so there is spirit energy in here. I'm starting, all right, I'm starting to feel the vibration. 
as though my arms are, are vibrating. It's a subtle energy field. And I am beginning, oh yeah, I am beginning to feel cold come from behind me. My stomach. <sighs> my God, I know what the pain is. It's, it's, it's fire. Man, I could even smell a burning sensation around me. It's, it's, it's burning flesh. The children who are watching their parents being killed. <laughs> We're set on fire. Oh, God. This is a, a, just an incredibly horrible death. <laughs> children looking at them being burned. <laughs> With day one of the investigation complete, PRS has picked up a shocking amount of paranormal activity. A dark, menacing figure in TJ's room. An untold number of spirits around the property. Evidence of a horrifying traumatic accident and visions of death by fire. We're picking up stuff in the house. We're picking up stuff around the house. You really have to separate all that and find out what it is that we're picking up. A lot has gone on here. A lot, of, a lot has gone on in the woods. A lot has gone on in the property, the area. I feel that there's a lot of souls trapped here that are not at peace. As day two of the investigation begins, PRS calls in illustrator Trevor McCarthy to help realize the psychic's visions and provide clues to the growing mystery. Susan describes the entity she sensed in TJ's room. This is a tall man, a carrier of heavy loads. He had a lot of weathered lines around his eyes, a very deep furrowed brow. Probably turn of the century yeah. to the 1920s tops. I feel that he is this heavier, blacker energy that is felt in the boys' room. As the illustration evolves, the man that Susan describes appears to be accustomed to manual labor or using heavy equipment. Could this man be linked to the historical event on which this mystery hinges? In an effort to shed light on the terrifying discoveries of the night before, Daryl has called in PRS researchers Kenny Rajinsky and his associate Emily Snyder. The family and PRS team gather together to hear their presentation on the history of the property and the local area. Their historical research could verify the psychic's findings and offer new avenues of exploration. They begin with the dead. What's really interesting about this property and this area, actually, is that it's centered between four different cemeteries. Second, a lost population. Up until the 18th century, the area around Port Murray was inhabited by the Lenny Lenape tribe. This area was still used for the hunting purposes, so it was still considered Indian territory. Third, a phantom waterway. From 1831 to 1922, the Morris Canal was the lifeline for the area. Now the canal is right outside here, at the end of the driveway, across the street. And in about 1924, it was actually drained and no longer used. The researchers have uncovered three possible historical explanations for the haunting. After the presentation, the team gathers in the van to discuss the case in light of this new information. I saw what you presented, you know, history-wise and research-wise, but we really don't feel that it's connecting with what the family said and what the psychics have said. The house is located between like four cemeteries. Graveyards have nothing to do with this case. Contrary to popular belief, there are not a lot of ghosts at graveyards. Nobody really dies at a graveyard. We also have the Lene Lenape Native American Indian tribe. Native Americans, I don't feel has anything to do with this case. I saw children and they were not Native American. Another point of our research was the Morris Canal, which is located right across the street from the house. Morris Canal, I don't feel has anything to do with it. That's water. I picked up fire. I saw fire. I felt flesh burning. I smelled it. it doesn't have anything to do with water. We realize now, you know, it's, it's not the graveyard. It's not the canal. It's not the Indians. There's got to be something else. We really need the help because there is a situation 
and it's escalating and we need to get to the bottom of it and we don't feel we're there yet. I really need you guys to go out, see what else you can find and get back to me when you find something. We'll see if it, if it works. Normally, houses are haunted by spirits of former tenants who were killed or died in the home. According to the researchers, neither happened here. But could some tragedy have occurred on the land before the house existed? Um, if we can find a reason why they're here, we can find there was a murder in the house or a death or something about the property, then we're going to have a better idea what's going on. But right now, it, it's kind of weird. When I've been into other houses, it's different. It's attached to a person. It, it may be attached to the house. There's none of that here. There's definitely something has imprinted itself upon this plot of land, and it was powerful enough to still be showing itself today. Finding that historical event will be the key to solving this mystery. But the mystery only deepens as Jane continues the investigation in the master bedroom. As soon as I enter this room, my stomach goes out. It is a room I find heavy. Sometime in the first hour after going to sleep, I will be woken up by something, feeling that something's staring at me. At that point in time, I can tell you that I'm yelling. One startling time was when I woke up and saw a group of people at the end of my bed. And it seemed like each one of them was trying to hand me something. And I'm not sure exactly what that message was. Using her psychic abilities, Jane begins to get a clearer picture of the spirits in Wendy's room. I feel that what I'm getting has to do with what was here before this house was built. I get children. I get children here, there, as, as though they're looking for their parents. I get an image of their parents being dead. A lot of stuff going on in this room. Not pinpointing it to necessarily one particular spirit, but there's just a buzzing, buzzing energy in this room. In the family room, Susan searches for answers. I feel like I'm wading through some very heavy force. I feel completely disconnected from myself. I don't know how else to explain this. This feels like a deluge. This feels like being swept away. It's very hard to be here in this room. With visions of fire and death all around her, Susan lowers her psychic defenses and completely opens herself to the spirits in the room. What I just encountered was the powerlessness of a woman watching her children being swept away. <sighs> They're gone. <sighs> the children are being swept away. In all of their combined experience, PRS has never encountered such a troubling mystery. The psychics have caught glimpses of a fiery catastrophe from the past. EVPs have been captured throughout the house, and countless spirits have been sensed in the home and on the land outside. It is Jane's hope that the many spirits that frequent the master bedroom will make themselves known to her. She spends the night with Wendy and John. A nightly visitation may provide clues to the deepening mystery. kind of come swoop right towards me. And I believe it was Jane's face. I saw the red hair. I was feeling someone was being pulled out of mine by something. 
earlier, maybe about 15 minutes ago, I felt as though something grabbed me in the arm. It was holding my arm. What the spirit's trying to do is try to pull me out with them and probably come around you. Because I felt like I was going out of body. It may have been being out of body. It was I was around you to protect and I was trying to push it away. I felt a calming presence because Jane was in the room with me and I felt nothing could happen to me. As the final day of the investigation begins, the team still has no clear answer to who these spirits are. Researchers Kenny Rajinsky and Emily Snyder continue to look for new historical information to shed light on the psychic's findings. The missing piece of the puzzle is found. Meanwhile, back at the house, Jane works with illustrator Trevor McCarthy in an effort to help catalog and clarify the many spirits identified so far. I've had a couple of uh, images. Okay. I'll start with uh, the children. The children who are watching their parents being killed. Looks like there's three. Looks like it's two girls and a boy. Uh, very scraggly looking. They're upset, you know, they're, they're almost uh, uh, terrified in a sense. Like something had just happened mm -hmm. where they lost their, their parents and they saw it in a traumatized way. Oh, so, they, so maybe they saw their parents yes, like, killed. killed. With still more questions than answers and not wanting to frighten the children, Daryl presents the psychic impressions found thus far to Wendy, John, and non-believer Amy. Now, these colored dots represent areas within the house that everybody sensed something. We're picking up all sorts of things because this land is just, there's so much it wants to say. So now we come to the question of, well, well why are they coming here? These spirits see you as beacons, they see you as antennas, and they go to you because they know that you can see them where your neighbors might not be able to. Why do you feel they're drawn to our son's room? He could be the most sensitive of all of you. There's a lot going on in that kid, even if he's not willing to let it out. So that means he might even be seeing a lot more than he says he is. Now, for you also, uh, Wendy, I think something is, is different and a little bit special. A lot of people believe that some souls have trouble crossing over. If this is true, and these spirits are kind of lost and don't know where to go, they're coming to you. They think you're going to be able to help them move on. While PRS believes that the Reynolds possess innate psychic abilities, they are still at a loss to explain the hauntings. Researchers Kenny Rajinsky and Emily Snyder return with some startling information. In 1925, there was a major railroad accident here down the road. 54 people were killed in all. This tragic event was psychically picked up by Susan on the first night of the investigation. It's an accident. It's an accident. Something accidental happened. The boiler exploded, and these people died in horrible, horrible deaths, most of them being incinerated. The Chicago to New York passenger train was speeding down the tracks at 60 miles per hour when it exploded. All the members of the engine crew died instantly. Most of the passengers had no hope of survival. Among those who perished were a couple who were traveling with their son and daughter, age 15 and 7. Although most of the victims were adults, Several children from ages 3 to 16 were also killed. Some of them burnt so badly, they've never been identified. When I was downstairs, I felt as though I was on fire. I've been set on fire. Oh, man, I could even smell a burning sensation around me. It's obvious to me now that that incineration that I was feeling in the flesh burning was probably from the train wreck. Seven-year-old TJ was visited by a menacing black figure. Could this be the ghost of a horribly burned train worker? Perhaps the brawny figure that Susan sensed in TJ's room. The entire town gathered to free them. Unfortunately, it was just too late and there was nothing you could do about it. Since I know that the train wreck 
is down the road, I would definitely like to visit that area. I definitely feel that there's more than we know at this point. As the final day of the investigation continues, PRS now believes they have the answer to the hauntings. Jane, Susan, and Wendy head out to the site of the nearby train wreck, hoping to finally find confirmation that this tragedy is, in fact, the source of all the spirit activity. If their beliefs are confirmed, they can then focus their energy and reach out to the trapped souls at the site, helping them move on to the afterlife and helping the Reynolds get some relief. It's almost feeling right in this area right here. I think I want to walk on the track. I'm, I'm right here. With no prior knowledge, Jane stops at the exact location where the train wreck occurred. She and Susan begin to psychically sense the tragic events of that day. I'm seeing you know, a long skirt and yeah. seeing how quickly that uh, caught fire and enveloped yeah. them in flames. The minute you talked about the skirt catching fire, I felt someone was trying to let me know about her experience and she caught on fire and was completely engulfed. <sighs> I'm beginning to feel very emotional. <sighs> oh my God. I'm feeling that same sensation of wanting to cry and so much pain. It's a lot of screaming and crying and calling for mommy, mommy, mommy. Prompted by the trauma that the psychics were experiencing, Wendy suddenly recalls the recent traumas that she went through. Twice last week, I woke up and my room, including my closet doors, the walls, everything was red. Now knowing historically about the train wreck, it could be very possible that what she was seeing with the walls red was fire and she was tapping into what I was seeing downstairs. By channeling the spirits, Jane begins to sense the connection between Wendy and the victims of the train accident. What I'm also feeling is why they would go to your house, the psychic energy of the house, the psychic energy of all of you would create <clears throat> almost like a beacon of light for lost souls. At one point in time, I had a group of people at the end of my bed, and they were all trying to hand me something. And somebody said to me, such as a ticket, there was definitely a cry for help from the other side. And some of the people who have been manifesting in Wendy's room were holding papers as if it were a train ticket or a passageway home. And it all came together for her. I had not pieced together that people were coming to me from the train wreck. So that experience in itself was a shock to me. While exploring the site, Jane, Susan, and Wendy discover a plaque memorializing the accident. At 3.25 a.m., they passed. Oh, my God. I think we need to ask any souls that are lost to find their way to the light to know that at this point we're honoring and remembering their death at this place. After visiting the site of the train accident, PRS believes that all of the ghosts haunting the Reynolds home are in fact the victims from the tragic wreck which occurred in 1925. Finally, the mystery is solved, and what the psychics had first sensed is now confirmed to be the trauma and despair that still echoes from that tragic event, the horrifying catastrophe that Susan picked up on the property. It's an accident. It's an accident. Something accidental happened. The tortured screams recorded in the family room. The searing pain experienced by Jane in the basement. Our house set on fire. 
Oh, man, I could even smell a burning sensation around me. The train accident also explains the family's paranormal encounters, the dark, menacing figure that TJ saw, the train worker horribly burned in the accident. I didn't even get to see the face, just blackness. The group of passengers gathered around Wendy's bed, desperately reaching out to her for help. Each one of them was trying to hand me something, such as a ticket. To free the trapped spirits from the train wreck who are terrifying the Reynolds, Jane conducts a seance with the PRS team, John, Wendy, and non-believer Amy. In order to help these lost souls of the train wreck, Jane must invite them into their circle of joined hands. We are asking spirits that need help to come into the center of the circle. The thermal camera is used to record temperature. A sudden drop could indicate the presence of spirits. Cold registers as blue, hot as red. Something coming around me. Wow, okay, there's a cold cold breeze right around me it's coming in from behind me just feel that breeze daryl i feel it whoa as the seance proceeds the room has clearly become more blue the temperature has dropped and the spirits may have arrived is anybody getting dizzy yes very dizzy every time someone say oh, i feel dizzy and six people at once yelled out me too it's unusual that you get that many people agreeing all right keep coming in it's okay we can handle it I smell something. Okay, what are you smelling? I don't, I don't know what it is. It's something burning. It's awful. It smells like flesh burning. It's horrible. I'm being back from the force of a blast. Everyone, for the most part, was feeling like, like they were being in a train wreck in different degrees. I see a man with fair skin and a detached jaw. His jaw is just hanging there. All right, keep coming. We want to feel you. We want to know who you are. We're not afraid. I keep hearing it's not my fault. I couldn't make it stop. Do you think he caused a death? Or he couldn't save someone? Yes. Yes. And I feel so much guilt. All right, keep coming in. It's OK. We can handle it. We know you're present. We can help you if you need it. Having already sensed a number of spirits from the train wreck, Jane begins the process of releasing them into the afterlife. I, I, I need to bring this through someone. There's something that has to be released. I'm going to bring it through. This is a spirit. <laughs> Using Jane as a portal to the afterlife, the lost souls from the train accident finally reached their destination. If there was confusion and the pain from how they died, you've released them from that pain and freed them to be able to go on to the light. In all their combined experience, PRS has never encountered a haunting of such magnitude. The spirits discovered throughout the Reynolds home and on the surrounding land are all part of a larger story, the catastrophic train wreck of 1925, in which 54 men, women, and children died terrible, painful deaths. Thanks to PRS, these tragic lost souls and the Reynolds can now find peace. I really came into this weekend thinking, this is ridiculous. There's nothing that I'm gonna see. There's nothing that's gonna happen. I think that Amy, the skeptic, has definitely had a transformation. I would definitely say that I am more aware of what's going on around me. I don't know how I feel about that because it was much easier for me to stay here when I didn't think there was anything. With the investigation complete, Jane counsels Wendy on how to handle visits from spirits. I think that the energy that you have and the opening ability should not be anything that you're afraid of. If you start to fill with fear, then just get control of yourself, let it go, and just accept. Because as you do that, you gain control. Although too young to follow detailed instructions, TJ is taught a simple way to deal with spirits. TJ, I see something here that you like very much. 
Is this the dream catcher from your room? Yes. And can you tell me real quick why you have this dream catcher? Because I always have bad dreams. And what does this dream catcher do for you? It catches all my bad dreams. Okay, give me your left hand. Put it like this. And then put your right hand on top. And now we're just gonna breathe and imagine that white light is coming out of your hands. Take a deep breath. And we're giving that a whole bunch of energy. It's like we're charging it like a battery. And it's gonna catch all those dreams and it's gonna help TJ feel very safe when you're dreaming. Okay, so no more scary ghosts. All right. The final piece that I'd like to bring to this puzzle is to go through the house and do a cleansing. I'm gonna spread a solution of frankincense, water, and sea salt. I am actually feeling something lifting off as a result of doing this clearing. If they do cleanse the house and she doesn't wake up anymore, then I'm gonna be a stronger believer in all of this. By helping her kind of adjust herself and not see things so much, her life's gonna be a lot better. She's gonna be able to get a lot more sleep so that she can calm down, get some peace of mind, and live a normal life. This weekend, certainly, I am happy with the way things ended, and I got much more than I expected. It's been a pleasure. I think that there's been some resolution with Wendy. The fear that I saw in her face, that's gone. Thank you. Can I give you a hug, DJ? Amy, I'm so glad you're a believer now. Thank John, thank you. Thank you. Anything happens, please give us a call. Let us know how you guys are doing. So long, thank you again. I'm not seeing the things that I used to see. I'm not having the visions that I was having prior to everyone being here. After you guys left, I have not seen anything. I'm not very scared anymore. And since the psychics have left, nothing strange has happened to me. And I really don't think anything strange has happened to Wendy. She does get a little nervous, though, at night when I'm not around. She hears things and kind of creeps her out a little bit. I've still heard quite a few voices. Some where they wake me up, others just I can't get to sleep at night because I'm hearing the voices. She still feels things and hears things. She just doesn't want to look. Even though I'm not seeing things, I know that things are still present.